Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Yes Buffers and on this channel here we're going to talk about skincare, hair care and all those sort of things that are supposed to make you look good for a really long time. And therefore uh, today we are going to talk a little bit about sunscreen because sunscreen that is obviously very important if you like to sort of like look after your skin so it's not damaged by UV light and so on. So it's, you don't want your collagen really to, to break down uh, too early. Now uh, there is a, a little thing and that is uh, sunscreens they often contains a lot of things that uh, you know, maybe are not that keen on. So uh, I was very excited when I recently saw that Boots have made a, a new uh, sunscreen or is it a sunscreen or is it more like a, a day cream or a, I would say that it's a sunscreen. If you use the correct amount it, it is uh, a sunscreen. It was be uh, protecting your skin with an SPF of 50. So um, the product is from the range called uh, number seven and it uh, sort of like the packaging looks like this. Then you have uh, the product and it's sort of like it looks like this and i would say it's very exciting because it says future renew so i'm thinking that we are sort of like using um products that are chemicals or ingredients that are very much like uh, what we are doing right now and what is sort of like uh, what is coming and really like we're looking into the future now when i looked at the filters that they have used uh, in this uh, product here i was a little bit disappointed and also, I was disappointed to find that, yes, they have used this uh, UVA in a circle, and that's fine. But what about the stars? I mean, Boots are famous for their star rating, but there is no star rating on this product here. So I thought that was a little bit uh, disappointing. And then and the next thing is obviously that the filters in the product is sort of like old-fashioned uh, filters. And I thought that was really, really like... Um, you missed an opportunity and uh, here we are talking about etyl salicylate and we have spoken about salicylates before particularly when we are talking about homo salad which is a salicylate and uh, there uh, we have the issue that it breaks down to salicylic acid which in animal studies have been shown to be a hormone disruptor so uh, that is uh, a problem with all sort of uh, salicylates and also with etyl salicylate and i expect that will be something that will be more tightly regulated in uh, the future now uh, boot have uh, used uh, this uh, filter and yeah okay other people are doing that as well but I just think that is sort of like a, a missed opportunity that they shouldn't have used that they should be more on the forefront and use some of these uh, modern uh, filters instead now we also have uh, avobenzone in there so again an old-fashioned filter and then we have something called uh, octinosate and oh yeah octinosate that is that is actually banned in Hawaii because it is destroying the coral reef so they don't want it over there so if you're going to Hawaii and you have bought this in the UK don't bring it with you so yeah there are a little some issues with uh, the filters now i have tried it uh, on my skin we just have a little look at um, what color is it does it leave a white cast on the skin no it doesn't really leave uh, any sort of white cast uh, on the skin because nothing in it that would give a white cast on the skin so in that sense kind of like okay now we just have a little look it's just like completely it's white as a normal cream as you would expect a, a cream uh, to be and it does not come up as i said on white on this skin so in that sense that is uh, fine so we will uh, try this stuff here on my skin a little bit later and i will be using a one milliliter that is normally what i use when i just put it on the exact face and i will need a little bit more it was for my neck as well so kind of like 1.25 milliliter and it is of course important to use uh, the correct amount because if you don't then you're going don't get uh, the um, protection that you expect to get. And I think that a lot of these people that have done reviews on this product say it's fabulous and really good underneath makeup and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just thinking that um, maybe they are not using the correct amount. And uh, there was, uh, of course, also this uh, review where the person said that a little goes a long way. But the sunscreen, that is not like that. It doesn't sort of like go a long way. You have to use uh, the correct amount. And I've said that many times before, but it is really important that if you're not using the correct amount, that you don't get the protection that you expect. So we basically don't really know how of a protection that you are getting. But yeah, yeah, a little or something is better than nothing. But um, yeah, I would say rather uh, safe than a uh, sorry. So a product uh, like this, it um, sort of like uh, there are something else with this product here. And that is uh, it contains something that is uh, called a peptide. So it uh, contains two peptides. So one of them is a tripeptide and one of them, uh, or the other one is a tetrapeptide. So that means that you have uh, three uh, amino acids and you have uh, four amino acids uh, combined together. And uh, that is supposed to be really, really good for the skin or at least uh, when we are studying it in a lab, so in a petri dish, and where we are using it together with something called fibroblast, which is producing a collagen and elastin in our skin, so down in the dermis. Now, uh, there is uh, one of these uh, 
peptides in here is actually called uh, peptides for like a GHK and that is uh, connected to a um, palmitic acid basically and that means that they have done that in order to make sure that uh, these uh, very uh, hydrophilic uh, amino acids, they are more easily uh, taken up by the skin. So when they combine it with this uh, palmitic acid, then it is supposed to be more like uh, easier to be taken up by the skin because the skin is very sort of like um, lipophilic. So it likes uh, something that is um, an oil basically. So in order to help these uh, amino acids go into your skin, then um, they have uh, combined it with this sort of a palmitic acid uh, thing. And that is uh, very fine and all that sort of thing. And we know how it works in a petri dish or in a lab. And uh, we don't really know how it is actually working in vivo, so in real life. But uh, obviously, uh, oftentimes these uh, creams, they are tested and people are super happy about it and all that sort of thing. And we don't really hear that much about the people and why they said, well, it did not really work that well or didn't really do anything for me. Now, the uh, tetrapeptide that is uh, there in order to uh, help the skin um, or stem the tide of malice from something that is produced in the skin that would basically break down a collagen. So uh, that is uh, one thing and it's actually it's working uh, in the keratinocytes. So that's a, a good thing in the sense that the keratinocytes, they are actually in the epidermis. So they are on the top layer of your skin where something like a fibroblast is in the dermis. So rather much further down. So uh, there might be a possibility that this uh, tetrapeptide will actually do a little bit of some working, but I don't think that this uh, tripeptide will be uh, doing that much because it is uh, supposed to be working in or on the uh, fibroblast and that is down in the dermis. And uh, the dermis is a uh, rather far down, I would say. And the thing is that actually I read an article uh, a little while ago and it was something about that they have actually tested this uh, GHK uh, so the tripeptide, and they have actually found that they could trace it 13 layers down into the epidermis. And that is really, really uh, impressive in the sense that it is impressive that it is possible to use a method to trace something, but is it impressive that it, you can see it like 13 layers down? I don't really think so because uh, the epidermis is more than 30 layers uh, deep. And uh, as I said, you want it actually to go into the dermis where the uh, fibroblast is. And uh, that is uh, what is called basically making the, the collagen and that is where you would like this uh, tripeptide uh, to be working and I don't really think that it will reach the uh, fibroblast. It might be doing uh, other good things uh, on the skin and might be so like um, moisturizing the skin or help the skin barrier some way or something like that but I just don't really think that it's going to help you produce more collagen. It might be I just think that with what we know at the moment I don't really think that is actually helping you to produce a more uh, collagen. Now, there is a, another thing which is not really good news for something like a peptide. And that is uh, on the skin, there is something called proteases. And proteases, that is something that is breaking down protein. And protein, that is basically just really long chains of uh, peptides or amino acids. So like if you have a really long uh, chain of uh, amino acids, then it's either called um, a peptide, if it's like small, but if it's longer, you call it a protein and uh, that sort of a uh, thing. So sort of like uh, the whole point here is that proteases that most likely will break down these amino acid sequences. So this uh, tetrapeptide and this uh, tripeptide most likely will be broken down by proteases uh, on the skin. And uh, proteases that is sort of like uh, if you have a a wound, then uh, maybe uh, that was because some bacteria had produced a protease uh, on your skin and uh, therefore have uh, damaged your skin. So that is sort of those uh, bacteria that we don't really like. But then there are all these uh, other uh, bacteria that is sort of like uh, working just to break down uh, dead skin cells and uh, sort of like uh, things that you basically would like to be broken down and be eaten by these uh, bacteria. So it keeps it sort of like a a good uh, sort of like a uh, chemistry uh, on your skin basically and now uh, there are some uh, articles that are talking about these um, peptides and why they are really helpful so like with the wound healing and that sort of thing but now if you have a wound well basically you have an open cut into the skin and they're sort of like it could make sense that uh, you're actually adding these uh, peptides directly into um, the dermis depending on how deep the wound is but I guess that if you have a wound you definitely will be going into uh, the dermis so uh, yeah then it might have some sort of like a, a purpose but now something like uh, this it is so to be something like that you can just put on skin that is intact and is uh, so like normally working you just like it to be helping you to 
do small collagen and uh, elastin and that sort of thing and i don't really think that uh, a tripeptide is going to do that because this sort of a tripeptide so like a uh, ghk they, i don't really think it will reach uh, the fibroblast for those uh, reasons that i have uh, already now uh, mentioned so uh, that is a uh, uh, one thing now uh, then uh, of course there is uh, the issue as i said with the uh, the sun fillers that they have used in this i think it's really uh, old fashioned and i think it's a rather a shame with all these uh, new filters that we are actually having and that we can use in europe and we can use here in the uk so i thought uh, a little bit uh, disappointing that uh, boots have not chosen to use that sort of uh, modern uh, filter Filters. Now, if you can have a, a little look and see uh, how it will look uh, on my face if I'm using like a 1.25 milliliter or one milliliter, sort of like that. I will say that when I tried it, I tried it uh, sort of like I had cleansed my skin and I used it and it did actually sink in pretty well. Uh, but it just, I don't really feel that this was moisturizing at all. And as the day progressed, I felt that my skin would be, uh, or felt more and more tight. And I, at some point I was actually thinking, I would like to get this stuff off and I would like to put uh, a more uh, moisturizing uh, cream on uh, instead. Then uh, there was uh, the other day and I tried it just as I normally do when I'm using a uh, sunscreen. I don't cleanse my face uh, in the morning. I just clean my eyes and, you know, basic stuff, but I don't really wash my uh, skin as such. And then uh, I put uh, this uh, stuff on and I felt that it was working better. But does it stain your eyes? I will say that to begin with, I felt maybe I don't really think it did. But then as the day progressed and you get more like a sweaty maybe around your eyes and things start to sort of like move around. And suddenly it just started to move in my into my eyes big time. And it was just like, I need to take this off because it really really uh, annoyed my eyes and it's uh, not uh, difficult to see why because uh, some of these uh, old-fashioned filters they are known for annoying the eyes so no big surprise there and yes it did annoy my eye so now we put this stuff on here so sort of like this is a one milliliter spoon so we have a little bit more so this would be sort of like for my neck as well so if we take uh, this stuff off here and as I normally say it's empty Keep it in your or on your fingertips and put it on to your skin straight away so that you know where it is and you don't want it to be taken up by your hands. So you need to have all this sort of uh, stuff on your skin. And yes, to begin with, yes, it will obviously look a little bit white, but this is not something that's going to give you a sort of like a, a white cast. And there might be people thinking that, oh, you're using way too much because it's just a day cream, that sort of thing. And it might be that this is just meant as a day cream. But then if they say that it's SPF 50, well, either you use it as a day cream and you don't get that protection or you use it for the protection and you need to use this sort of amount. Now I have just cleansed my face now. And so I'm putting this on clean skin, basically. And I think that it did sort of like sink in relatively well. But now where maybe I am a, a little bit more, not sweaty in the face, but I'm not sort of like um, super dry in the skin, uh, it might take a little longer for it to, uh, to sink in. And definitely I will say either way, um, it did leave sort of like a, a shiny look, sort of like, um, when I had no uh, sort of like um, cream underneath, it felt a little bit like it looked like a dried up egg white. Or um, when I had uh, the cream underneath, it sort of like it just looked awfully uh, greasy. So I think that people that are saying that this is really great underneath makeup, I really don't think it is. Now I'm putting it uh, on my eyelids as well. And uh, I will be taking this stuff off when I'm finished filming. Uh, but this is just how I normally are putting on uh, sunscreen and yes, I had a little bit more than one milliliter so to be fair to the product, I put it down uh, on my neck as uh, well. So here it might sort of like start to not look that overwhelmingly uh, greasy, I don't, I, but I, I, I feel greasy and yes, obviously it needs a little bit of time to, to sink in, um, but yeah, it has sort of like, there's no perfume in it as such, but it sort of like has a sort of like chemical sunscreen sort of like a smell. But now we put this uh, stuff on and uh, yes, I would say this is sort of like how it's gonna look. And uh, yes, you might be tempted to just take your palm and just like go like that. But no, you shouldn't do that because then you won't get the correct protection, of course. So 
is this sort of uh, some stuff that I would be uh, sort of like um, buying again. I don't really feel a need to buy this uh, stuff again. And uh, as I said, it I don't think it was moisturizing. And I think that if I had a cream underneath, it was too oily, too too much of everything that I don't want uh, in the sunscreen. And uh, yeah, so just use uh, your fingertips. And yes, you can see actually this, my hands are pretty shiny. It's just come all the way down here. So it just, you need to be, even that I try to be careful, it just means that yes, you risk that you're taking it into your hands. You have to be really careful when you're putting on a uh, sunscreen. So now I would say that this stuff here is pretty shiny uh, it's definitely not matte and uh, the feeling I have on my skin now is sort of like a, around here this area I have just shaved before I filmed so around this area here I feel so like a, a tinkling or a, something like that I won't say that it tinkled all day long when I used it the other day it was more like a sort of like a, like my skin became smaller and smaller it just didn't feel nice so I would say this stuff here is um yeah. I don't really see the hype about uh, this uh, product here. I don't think it's a good product. And I think that uh, the uh, sun filters in it are old fashioned and I cannot recommend that you're using something with a salicide uh, on your skin. So uh, yes, uh, I would say boots back to the drawing board and uh, try and make something that will last a little bit into the future. That was my verdict. I'm not gonna buy this uh, stuff uh, again. So yes, if you would like to see more of this sort of videos, please subscribe, hit the bell, and do all those things. You must do in order to be notified when I upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.